Okay, hello YouTube. Today we're going to be exploring how to play the knight or sustain with the black pieces, which begins after e4, c5, knight of 3, d6, d4, c, d4, knight d4, knight of 6, knight c3, a6, begins the knight orf. And today we're going to be exploring how to face one of the most dangerous weapons you will ever face in the knight or Sicilian, the dreaded uh, fisher sozin attack, beginning with the move bishop to c4. Now, if you like content like this and you want to see more of it, please hit that subscribe button and click on that notification icon. Now, the fisher sozin attack is... Um, going to be tough for me to show you exactly the best way to play against it with black because I absolutely love playing these positions with white as well. So these are positions that I love playing with both colors. So I'm going to try not to give you too much preparation for white. I'm going to just try to focus on how exactly do we defend against this as black. So for starters, there are a ton of options um, after black's next move, which is e6, which in my mind is a positionally obligatory move. The move bishop to c4 is putting some serious pressure on the d5 square, and one of the main goals, primary goals of the position for black, is to control that d5 square. Also, this move contains kind of a small threat. One of the things that black is threatening to do is to play b5, b4 with tempo, and then take this point for free, and that is actually something that white needs to be somewhat concerned about. So usually white should just preempt this by retreating the bishop. White doesn't always do this. Sometimes white just castles, but uh, bishop b3 is is fine, and it's the move that gets played 99% of the time. Now, at this point, there are three moves that people try here. There's knight c6 going back into the mainline classical. Uh, this will typically turn into something like a Velomorovic attack. Uh, there's the mainline against this with b5. And then there's the mainline with knight on b to d7. Now, the move that I actually recommend is knight on b to d7. One of the ideas here is to play this early knight c5 and get rid of this problem bishop on b3 before it becomes too much of an issue, and then basically just play chess. And as a matter of fact, this is probably one of the hardest variations I have to face when I'm playing the fischer sozin variation with the white pieces, so that's why I know this is really objectively the best line. Another thing that knight on v to d7 takes advantage of, and I, and I appreciate the subtlety of this, is in a lot of variations in the uh, fischer sozin this sacrifice on e6 can become a very serious problem if we cut off communication between the bishop and the pawn at the wrong moment. So even after, say, knight on b to d7, let's say instead of, uh, let's say after f4, black were to play some foolish move like bishop to e7, it would be possible here to sacrifice immediately with bishop e6, f e6, knight e6, and then bring this knight to f5 after capturing three pawns for the piece. In general, whenever black gets three pawns for the piece, I mean, whenever white gets three pawns for the piece in these situations, white has an advantage because this king is wide open and there's just nothing that black can really do about it. So... One of the things that I really appreciate, like I said, about knight on b to d7 is what we're really trying to do is we are trying to relocate this knight as quickly as possible from d7 to c5 and reconnect this bishop's communication with this pawn. Like, say, after knight c5, we have reconnected that knight's communication with that pawn and the bishop's communication with the pawn, and there is no longer a threat of bishop takes e6. And we're trying to get this idea off so that we can then play bishop e7 freely without having anything terrible or horrible happen. So this is actually a clever trick for black to finish his development. So now white should put immediate pressure. He should play pawn on f4 to f5, because if we don't put immediate pressure on e6, what are we doing? And now you might ask yourself, can we take this pawn on e4? The answer is absolutely not. This is this is a big no-no. This is this was in my Fisher's uh, Fisher's my 60 memorable games. Uh, there was a game between uh, Fisher and uh, Ben Dartsky in 1966 that went uh, f e6, queen h4, g3, uh, knight takes g3, which was terrible, and then knight f3 hitting the queen, queen back takes, and okay. Like, Black is lost here. Uh, his position has just completely fallen apart. He didn't get anything for the material. Uh, and the game ended uh, pretty brutally and pretty quickly, just a few moves later, because this is Fisher playing the white pieces. He's not going to let Black off the hook very easily. Okay, so knight f takes e4. 
not sound. So we don't do that. So bishop e7. That's the correct approach. Another way you can do this if you just don't want to study theory is it is kind of possible at any point to just play something like knight b3, a b3, bishop e7. And just kind of play chess from here. You know, you can just exchange on b3 and just play chess from here. But my recommendation is to play the main line, play bishop e7, and then queen f3 is the main move, and then I recommend castles. Now, the old move that you kind of had to reckon with was bishop e3, but I would say that uh, black isn't having too much trouble uh, with these lines. Uh, what, one of the issues I think that, that white kind of runs into at this point is that... Uh, uh, you know, just even just queen c7 and b5 are kind of a problem. Of course, you can play the way that they uh, played it in uh, short versus Kasparov. You can also just play e5 and then b5 and play it this way. And apparently this was enough to equalize in several games uh, between uh, Nigel Short and Gary Kasparov. So this is another way that you can play it, uh, you know, just exchanging everything. And eventually this was a fairly uh, level position. Actually, black is a smidge better here, but he has to play everything absolutely correctly. So uh, it's playable kind of either way. Uh, my main recommendation against bishop e3, I guess, would just be uh, either e5 or or queen c7, uh, followed by b5, I think, are both perfectly acceptable. Not just perfectly acceptable, probably this is the best line, just queen c7 and b5. And it's actually very difficult for white to come up with a great plan. So I think like the main move that you need to be more concerned about is something like castle's kingside. I think castle's kingside is a lot more dangerous. And then queen c7. And now bishop to g5. And now again, because we're dealing with, we have to keep this communication. And we don't want to play a move like... Um, it's kind of interesting. Like we also want to keep this communication as well, this communication between the queen and the bishop. So it looks kind of tempting to play a move like bishop d7, but that leaves open the possibility for white to play something like uh, f takes e6, f takes e6, and knight f5. And this is an extraordinarily wild position. See, one of the issues here is, since we've cut off communication, we don't have the option to break this pin and threaten to take the knight, because they're throwing in an in-between check on the e7 square. And when they throw in that in-between check, we're essentially completely lost. So we would have to play something like either bishop to d8 or rook a e8, neither of which is totally ideal. Uh, if, for example, bishop d8, we could see something like queen g3 threatening everything on the king side and then knight b3 we would have knight g7 and this position is barely holdable for black according to the engine but all of the moves from here on out have to be incredibly incredibly precise and i'm still not 100 percent sure that black is really saving but uh in theory, black should be okay. Like, if queen c5 checks, starting with that, black should be okay. If knight takes a1, black is completely lost after knight e6. Um, there's apparently no way to save. Even after queen b6, bishop e3 check would pick up the queen. Uh, but it's actually better for white not to take it. It's better for white to take on f8. And uh, this is a completely winning position for white, apparently. Uh, it's not clear if there's any other way for uh, black to play this position. Like, you can't just take the knight. Uh, you'd be losing in this way. You'd be losing the queen here with bishop takes. And then again, it's not ideal to take it right away. It's You're better off exchanging rooks and then taking it, and then uh, black would be completely lost here. But here I'm just kind of analyzing for white. What, why don't we do this? Well, because it's scary and dangerous, so just don't do it. So don't play bishop d7. We don't want to cut off communication. Um, another Another option is, you know, white can play things slow. White can play king h1, and um, after a few more moves, we could end up with something like this. This is what happened in Ivanov versus Norditsky in St. Louis in 2011, a uh, U.S. championship match. And uh, White ended up with an advantage and ended up winning the game. So this actually went really well for Ivanov. So if we go back, what we should really be doing here is we should be playing b5 to maintain that communication uh, with all of our material. And then after, say, a3, what we're going to do is now we're going to exchange now we can play bishop d7. There's not going to be any weird knight f5. Uh, king b1, rook b8, very logical. 
and then after uh, b4, and then say a b4, rook b4, the position should be roundabout level. Like black should have enough counterplay on the queen side and enough play in the middle to make up for the dangerous play that white has on the king side. And white does indeed have some dangerous play on the king side. So um, for the most part, uh, these are all of the main lines that you're going to run into in the uh, fischer sosen variation. And this is really how we should be playing this with black. I mean, once you exchange off these pieces, once you exchange off this material, uh, you should be able to play chess from here. You should be able to equalize uh, uh, with, with a little bit of difficulty usually and making sure that you navigate all of these very dangerous pitfalls and stuff like this. The main thing is just to remember this communication to play queen c7 uh, and then bishop g5. And just remember this communication between the queen and the bishop. Remember the communication between the f pawn and the e pawn of uh, this critical move b5 right here and then we can go ahead and exchange and we can just now we can just play chess and here we're just playing chess so uh, just a few more sample moves just so you get an idea this was actually just me just uh messing around with some engine variations uh rook b6 and uh, again the position is roundabouts level so anyways i hope that you found this uh, video helpful. I hope that you learned something new about chess, and I hope you can use a lot of these ideas in your own games. Thank you very much for watching.